You may be getting tired of all these fennel and mohawk alternative videos, but I can assure you this is the final one, and it may very well be the most important one. And that is because the bike route that we were following, that the city recommends, is actually not the best route. There is a slight modification. If you've ever looked at a map of Hamilton, you might notice that there are two streets south of Macassa and Franklin that are much better to cycle down, and yet they are not part of the bike route. I think they should be, and we'll be discussing them in this video. They are Dallas Avenue and Burkholder Drive. Let's get cycling. We begin cycling down Mountain Brow Boulevard. Now this is a little while before we need to get onto the two streets that we are discussing today, but I figure it's a good reminder of what we have to travel to get to this alteration to the bike route. So we are on Broker Drive and we are then going on to 9th Avenue once we get to the traffic lights. And so this is sped up about five times. And the day that I filmed this was actually very windy. So hopefully the camera stays relatively stable. But yeah, as you can see, this, it's not horrible. Uh, it's definitely better than traveling on Mohawk or Fennel. Both those streets do score higher, especially Mohawk. I have that scoring quite high. I do think I need to make some adjustments in the future. This winter, I'm going to be re-examining the scoring system and seeing about uh, making some adjustments. Anyways, here at the end of 9th Avenue is Upper Gage, and here is our first problem. Normally on this route, we would turn right, so I would have been able to turn right at any point. However, you do have traffic coming up right behind you, and you have to make a left-hand turn to get onto Mikasa. Here, we have to wait for the traffic light, and there's no sensor for bicycles. Unfortunately, that pedestrian did not press the button. Uh, they just crossed, so I go up to the button myself. I was trying to see just how long I would have to wait. It definitely seems like it needs a weighted vehicle to trigger these lights, or a pedestrian to press the button. And now we are on to upper gauge. So we have brought our speed from five times up into, or down to 133%. Uh, so it's still a little bit faster if you want to see the speed that I was actually cycling. Uh, and if you're on YouTube, you can go to the little cog. There's an option for playback, and you would select the 0 0.75, and that would be the actual speed that I was cycling at. Anyways, here we are on Dallas Avenue. And it's a decent street. It's about 450 meters of narrow road. There's two stop signs. But included in its score is Macassa Park. And we'll be cutting through Macassa Park, which is about 350 meters. And really, any street that can kind of be continued on with a bike path has the potential to up the score quite a bit. And so the score that Dallas and Macassa Park receive as a whole is a 78. That is a C plus grade. Meanwhile, Macassa had a I believe it was a 61, if I recall correctly, which is a passing grade. Um, but of all the streets of the Mohawk and Fennel alternative route, it was the only passing grade. So as you can see, taking Dallas and Macassa Park, it's even better. And you're going to see one of the best benefits coming up ahead when we have to get to the next street, which is Burkholder. It is a straight line right through from this parking lot. So that's why I came off the path and I'm going through the parking lot. If you were turning left, you could stay on the path. But if you wanted to go straight or turn right, you'd go through the parking lot. And yeah, no problems. I did not have to cycle on, on any additional streets. And so here we are on Burkholder. Burkholder receives a score of 70. So that is a C minus, which is definitely a better option than Franklin. 
and it's going to go through a bit of a park as well, and then we'll join up with East 24th Street. And so I think this probably should have been the bike route when the city was designing where all the bike routes are in the city. This just makes a lot more sense. There's more parks. The problem with this park, though, with Burkholder Park, is that you do have to drive through a covered pavilion, I guess you might want to call it, uh, where there's seating. And that I don't quite like, because uh, you never know. It could be crowded. Um, yeah, as you can see here, we'll be passing through it. I don't like that the path goes through it, but it's not a big deal. But yeah, this should have been the route, not go on to Upper Gage, then go Macassa, then go on to Upper Sherman, and then Franklin, I think, Dallas, and Burkholder is definitely the option. Anyways, here we are sped up. The video was quite short, so I'm just going to uh, let you see a little bit more of the route uh, sped up back to five times. Uh, unfortunately here, I think we do need a bicycle sensor to, for uh, like especially for people wanting to go straight or left. Uh, there should be something there that could trigger it and then you could go straight through. Uh, that one wasn't too long of a wait. The upper gauge one was definitely a very, very, very long wait. Even after pressing the button, it was a long wait. Um, not the worst pedestrian button wait time that I've seen. Uh, the one on Upper James and Monarch, I believe, is pretty bad. Um, that has a pretty long wait time when you're crossing to go to the plaza across the street from where the bus lets you off. If you were to, say, come from down the mountain or closer to the escarpment, uh, that one is a pretty long wait time. So I don't know why they don't have, you know, it set up that if a pedestrian presses a button, that a... You know, a light would change a lot quicker. And speaking of Upper James and Monarch, we, we will see that in this video. I will point out the intersection just so you can see it. This is all bonus footage. Um, if you're just here to see the alternate route, uh, this was the intersection right here, right by the shoppers. Uh, that one doesn't change as often as it should. Included in this bonus footage is how I prefer to go down the escarpment. Like if you were forced onto Upper James, I don't recommend cycling on Upper James, but uh, I do have a e-bike so I can go fairly fast and I can keep up with traffic. However, I wasn't able to get into the left turning lane to get onto Inverness. And so I had this vehicle in front of me that cut in front of me. So I had to do a bit of a, a U-turn around here. <laughs> Uh, just so I can make a left-hand turn. And uh, yeah, so if you were to come from Inverness uh, and you wanted to go down the Kediaxis Trail, you turn onto Tanner Street. It's not really a street. It's labeled as Tanner Street. You go through Southam Park. You go down this ramp and you press the button and you cross. And here is the Kediaxis Trail. So yeah, if... You've only seen my footage of the Ketty Axis Trail. Um, I do think I might have some footage of me doing a downhill on the Ketty Axis for one video. It might have been one of my loops. I'm not 100% sure, but this is what it kind of looks like. It's a very easy to pick up speed when going down. So if you don't like going too fast, just make sure you, know, you have good brakes. Here is the improved intersection at... Wellington, and here we are on Hunter Street. But yeah, uh, that is pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you found the parts about Dallas and... What's the name of the other street? Burkholder. <laughs> Sorry. Um, the neighborhood is called Burkholm, so I always want to call it Burkholm, but the street is Burkholder. Uh, but yeah, so hopefully you found that information uh, informative. So take care and stay safe. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters who are helping to make improvements to this channel.